So my name is Masood Chowdhury, Masoodul Alam Chowdhury. I'm a professor of uh, economics, you might say, but also my interest is much broader. So uh, the last uh, how many years, umpteen number of years maybe, uh, last 40 years, I've been working in this project, which is of uh, very esoteric nature, but I think it is of a very primary nature in the world of revolutionary scientific thinking. This is the, so let me put it out as in the, in the form of a title to you today and speak on two parts of it. The title that I, I assign to today's talk is on the structure of Tawhidi string relations. Now this Tawhidi string relation is a technical word that has come out of the Quran because of the nature of Tawhid as a law. Now Tawhid for instance, as uh, 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 if you do not know about it, is the uh, belief in the oneness of Allah. Now the oneness of Allah, it, it exists at two very uh, subtle levels. The understanding, the belief. First is the belief in the oneness of Allah. But in a scientific investigation uh, should be of such a nature that the um, explanation, the, the uh, idea of science, the, in, the inner uh, content of scientific thinking as well as application need not be only applicable or good, uh, uh, um, important and useful only for believers. It should be universal. So even if an atheist were to uh, get the benefits of the Tawhidi uh, way of thinking of uh, construction of scientific knowledge, then it should be good to him as well as good to a, one, to a person who believes in Tawhid uh, uh, fundamentally. To the Muslims around the world for all time, Tawhid is monotheism and it uh, is based on the oneness of God, the oneness of Allah. And this is a belief, uh, it's, it's, it's a cardinal belief. With it, without it, of course, you know, there is no Islam and a Muslim cannot, and cannot be really called a Muslim. But this is at the level of belief. But, at the level, but Tawheed manifests itself at, at, a, at another very important level which comes out of the belief of monotheism and monotheism is one way or the other, as the Quran itself says, that there is no one who can deny the oneness of Allah. So monotheism is uh, universal. It is uh, accepted by almost all religions uh, that there is one God. But the, the fact of the second level of uh, that where Tawheed coming from the Quran makes a subtle difference is Tawheed understood as law. Tawheed understood as law really means to say what, uh, how Tawheed manifests, shows itself in the structure of mind and matter relationship. Where does knowledge come from? What is the nature of knowledge? How do you apply it, formalize it, and uh, put it into scientific analytical systems? So these are the things that, which is at the second level, and without this second level of understanding, Tawheed can only be understood at the level of belief, but not at the level of externalizing the knowledge that comes out of belief. And knowledge itself is discursive, it is analytical, and it is useful for everyone and for in everything. That does not really make a difference between Muslim and non-Muslim. It should be universal and therefore it is also unique. Now, Tawhid, in that sense, that it is an analytical uh, way of thinking of the nature of and discovery of science and the scientific uh, content and its usefulness to people, to all people, and in, in every different context and situation, it has a structure. Firstly, uh, no science, a science cannot be science unless it is based on a certain premise. So if we say that 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, which really these days we don't say 1 plus 1 as a numerical thing, we can consider uh, these kinds of counting in terms of 
uh, unions and intersections. These are called, these are certain operations, operations of mathematics. So there are certain fundamental operations of mathematics in terms of which we try to build up the, the number system, the way we count, the way we uh, um, develop formal systems and other kinds of things. So that, that uh, number system or the way of understanding that as a not in terms of one plus one and so on and so forth, but rather in terms of uh, relational structures is what mathematics teaches us about. And underlying that, of course, you can derive numerical numbers like one plus one and rational numbers and other, other kinds of things. So that here is the Tawhid also telling us that, um, in, in fact, all the numbers, the mathematical system will be telling you that the knowledge of union and in relationship and uh, combining things together and making interpretations out of them, deriving uh, certain theories and uh, kind of inferences out of them, they belong to a certain way of thinking. This way of thinking comes from a certain premise that is assumed, that is taken into uh, as a fixed uh, pr uh, starting point from which all other scientific knowledge is, knowledge is, der uh, is derived. This idea of coming from something, coming from a certain premise is assumed to be the nature of the thing, of that premise. Then the, the thing itself is of that nature. Okay? So if, if we, if that very um, original thing that is the nature of anything, it, it is set by, a, it is called in, phys, in philosophy, uh, or what do you call the philosophy of science, it is called by the word, its name is given the word ontology. Ontology is therefore, uh, a, the, it's a theory of being. A thing is, has its nature. And we have to assume that nature of anything to start up from there on and make other kinds of structures, deductions, formal systems, inferences, empirical system, conceptual system, etc., etc. So the very starting point is the ontology of the thing. Now in Tawheed, the ontology is the oneness of God, the monotheism. This is the ontology. And therefore, the premise of knowledge is the ontology. But the ontology itself it resides with God alone. And unless we really understand how God comes and connects with us, our lives, our, our world systems in which we live, our experiences, etc. And amongst of those things, kind of things are is science and economics and social sciences and very many different uh, uh, things that come out of it, such as market systems, institutions, governments, policies, global orders, and all these kind of things that come out of that as uh, particular kinds of things. Okay. So, this Tawheed uh, Dapo is considered to be the beginning of knowledge, as just as science would say, well, the beginning of knowledge is the mind itself. And that's Tawheed from the very, its very inception makes the critical uh, difference. The critical difference is the ontology, that is the spring of knowledge. Where does knowledge come from? We, don't, we are not talking of, at this time about the nature of knowledge, as to what knowledge uh, uh, appears to be, but rather where, it does, where does it arrive from? And this knowledge that arrives from is the being of the thing called knowledge. That being is in 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 uh, uh, in uh, um, Tawheed, This being is the oneness of, of God. That the oneness of God means that He is non-partnered, that He is absolute, that that the knowledge premise is uh, perfect, is uh, is is perfect. So that is where we start from. But then it has to be externalized to make sense, to make uh, uh, useful um, uh, deductions in the world in which we live our experiences. This uh, is a kind of a mathematical mapping and a mathematical mapping which takes an original thing into something else. This is the mapping called the ontology is being mapped. Ontology is being mapped by in a very well-defined, certain uh, well-defined way into experience. This mapping which takes the original ontology of knowledge of being is the nature of, 
of the original premise of knowledge to the experiences in which we live, where the world system lives, not only human beings, but everything, even human, non-human, everything uh, experience is, is, is a part of experience. This mapping is the formation of epistemology, which is meaning the theory of knowledge. Therefore, our knowledge, the, wor the world in which we live, the experiences that we gather, and we work on that, and we formulate and structures and different interpretation of science and non-science and many other kinds of things of different diversities. They come, just originate from the ontology of the oneness of God and is ex externalized, that is to say, mapped into our experience. And this experience is, their mapping itself brings the ontology into a formation of knowledge. That is our worldly knowledge. And this is what is epistemology. Now the nature of the original knowledge is unity. Is is that 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 Allah is that God is one, and therefore the knowledge that He has is full, perfect, absolute, and therefore that knowledge itself is of the nature of oneness, of unity. But how, what is that unity that really matters to us? Because we do not know the nature of unity of the original being. But we can understand the unity of knowledge by a way of its functions. And the unity of knowledge, that is as for instance, you don't know what the day is unless you see whether the sun shines or the sun doesn't shine. And then you can say that, well, the, the day is such and such. Otherwise, you were sleeping before you saw the day out of your window. So it, just like that, the nature of God is something that is far beyond our reach. We, it is not humanly uh, possible. But nonetheless, the, the nature of the oneness is externalized, shown to us in the Quran by something which is called ayat. Ayat means signs, S-I-G-N-S, signs of God, signs of Allah. And the signs of Allah represent or manifest, they show the oneness, the nature of the oneness that is in the ontology of God, that is the fullness of knowledge of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's just start a bit. And so there you are. The, the one therefore uh, uh, has to first understand what is this unity of knowledge that we are talking about. Now the unity of knowledge, as the Quran has tells us, is really shaped up. It is shown and explained to us in terms of organic unity. That is relational unity. That is that everything in the world whether they are good things in the world or bad, or not the good things in the world, they all in different their their different categories. They exist in unity between themselves. But there is no unity between diverse, different, not diverse, but different things like good and bad cannot unite together. And uh, sometimes in the third category is that good and bad we don't know very well unless, of course, you know it becomes very clear to us. So there is a moment, but it is a finite a period of a short period of time before we come to know exactly whether a thing is good or a thing is not good, and therefore the separation between the, those two again becomes well defined. And these are the things that end undetermined, undecided, un undecidables. So they are in between things. Therefore, the nature of the oneness that the Quran externalizes is the nature of the organic relationship that exists between things of these three categories. They don't have yeah, unity between them, between, uh, amongst themselves they don't, but it is inside in these categories, within them, the, the three categories that they have settled. But the third category, as I just told you, is a disappearing, is a very short-lived one. Okay? So this is therefore, the organic unity of things is something that we have to learn about in order to generate the nature of the oneness or the unity of, of knowledge that is the ontology and that ontology is then brought into the world through a mapping. This mapping is very important because it is this mapping, the existence of which or the non-existence of which makes a whole very big de uh, departure between the, with, uh, between the way the, we have understood science and what truly science ought to be. And this is in the minds and the books and the works of the greatest of the, of the scholars of all different uh, persuasions. They can be, they may be 
uh, may belong to one or the other religion, that is irrespective of the fact there have been people who have rightly and correctly and fairly uh, sought into those, those different uh, final uh, things. What is the finality? Now, so uh, we have to therefore see this uh, externalization and this mapping which carries it to, to an external experience, this is the mapping which the Muslims take it to be the Sunnah, that is the teachings of the Prophet. And they are taken up a little incrementally from the Quran and the Quran is uh, the ontology which is externalized. But how would a non-believer or an atheist or the, who doesn't believe in the Quran or doesn't have any um, uh, uh, persuasion on Islam, how will he really to, uh, talk of, uh, uh, look at this, this uh, phenomenon? There, his way of looking at it was is that the ontology of knowledge is a uh, is a unbounded is an unbounded um, uh, which what sometimes we call in um, in mathematics topology an unbounded space of a homogeneous thing called knowledge and this knowledge itself has the property of being united in the sense of organic unity of uh, things of the uh, three categories that I've talked about and these and this forms a law the law of oneness that is the monotheistic law and it is externalized and brought into the world and this is an epistemology that is our knowledge is formed out of the unity of the knowledge of the ontology therefore the carrier as well as the experience that we have in this life must also be organically unified the world therefore becomes a reflection of the knowledge derived through the and externalized through the mapping and the world that we make is therefore one of uh, unity of knowledge. The world that we study is intrinsically of unity. It is unified within itself and therefore what we are really trying to uh, experiment with the world, understand the world is that how well in what respect and, in, in, and also the capability the potentiality of the world to learn in the framework of unity because of the fact that that the knowledge of the world that we have derived as epistemology has come from an ontology the beginning which is unified which tells, uh, shows a law called Tawheed and this law of Tawheed is, is, is ex explicit, explicit in explaining the nature of unity as an organic uh, being. And thus we have inherited a, a world system, according to Tawheed, that is unified. It is discoverable by the understanding of Tawheed as oneness through, the, through a, a, in a structured way that is organic structure and then made into a reality by putting it into uh, operation. And these operations, they comprehend economics and science and many, many other kinds of, of uh, different uh, things. Now, uh, the third category, the, so I have explained to you the ontology. Ontology is the beginning of knowledge as unity in the form of organic unity. Second is the epistemology, that is the creation of knowledge of the world that gives a shape and form to the world which is unified. And then we discover that world to be unified and give it meaning, shapes and forms and operational directions. And this Mapping from one to the other is the Sunnah of the Prophet, but which uh, anyone else who doesn't have a persuasion in these ideas will scientifically say that, well, we need something to map one thing to another to make it relational. And this is a mapping, S, is, if you call it, is a mapping from the original ontology to the formation of knowledge of the world, which makes the world understandable in the framework of unity and also in the frame, framework of not and unity because of the contrast that exists between good and bad and between reality and non-reality between something which is uh, uh, intrinsic in nature and something which is not so that the opposite view is also manifested in this kind of a relationship this is the mapping and this mapping itself is therefore functional is also an ontology is not the origin of things it is the origin is ontology but the mapping is the function that takes the ontology and makes it into an epistemology and creates a world. Now the third, this being the two therefore, the third thing is to experiment the world. 
the world in which knowledge has been inherited and the world has been now given a shape and form of unity and now I have to discover that world, make it, give it a shape and give it a meaning, give it, it inferences, have to come out of it and uh, institutions have to be made, economic markets, global orders, very many different kinds of family as <clears throat> and uh, also a very d deeply mathematical and analytical scientific systems will have to be now made out of this relationship of the fundamental kind of relationship that I've just explained to you. This is therefore the, the, uh, this is the experimentation with formal forms. Formal is the formalism. Formalism means giving an, uh, a shape to your idea that can be empirically made viable or if not empirically then at least you know, through other processes of discourse can be made applicable. So that if you are talking about uh, any kind of nitty-gritty thing or up to the very highest levels of, uh, of, uh, of very complex things then there, there is always a kind of an idea that rules and that idea is then given into a into a, it is made into a formula if the, that formula is either mathematical or non-mathematical based on simply discourse on agreement upon people and, uh, and, and such like kinds of things. This is therefore the third uh, part which brings the ontology, its epistemology of the unified world of organic forms into a formal order, formal systems and these formal systems are now giving shape and form from which we can make experimentation and, and take data and discourse amongst ourselves. We can make policies and institutions and keep on going from that. So the inferences come out of these kinds of uh, third uh, form of result. The, 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 third, the, the uh, third form of result takes a very detailed, uh, um, very detailed form. You see, it's, it's difficult to really explain all that uh, in this uh, short uh, course of uh, this uh, um, presentation. But nonetheless, uh, one can understand that what is that what we are looking for? We are looking for a world that is unified because of the fact that the ontology and the epistemology have created that kind of world of unity. But now we have to find out to what degree it is unified. Why? Because if it is not unified and if the intrinsic nature of the world is really unified and that is the critical realism, then of course we have to reconstruct the world, make corrections, give it uh, certain kinds of policies and changes and, recon and re reformations that will make the world better than what it is. And this is really to create a more organically related, complemented, participated world rather than a world that is completely in conflict and, and, and not cooperating with each other. So that is why we go and take the uh, ontology, epistemology of the nature of the world, of organic unity between um, similar kinds of things and then we put data and we all, uh, uh, these can be experimental data, empirical data or also discursive data and then we bring those things into a formal model and this model itself could be any one of those similar kinds of categories and from that we experiment and this experiment is to discover to what degree the world is organically unified between the good things or between the other things of life and that will yield the inference. Now that is a process, this is a process and we call this, well this is the process one let's for instance but the process one where it ends it's there exactly where it begins again for the reasons are that learning is a continuity and this continuity is also across systems and within systems. So it is a continuity across continuums of, of, of uh, different organic forms. So it is a mind-matter relationship uh, spread out over events that happen over knowledge, space and time universe. Okay. It keeps on going, keeps on going. It's never ending. So such kinds of things, of course, the evaluation of the performances of these kinds of um, uh, structures that we have just talked to you about first, second and third, we're completing the uh, process, repeats itself in the second process and the third process and never ends, in fact. Life is never ending. It is always learning. Okay? This is the implication we get out of this kind of a Tawhidi uh, st uh, string relation. That is the structure. 
of the Tawhidi string relation that I wanted to talk to you about. It never ends itself. That's, therefore, uh, uh, the Tawhidi model as a scientific model has really presented something which is uniquely and universally very different from the kinds of models that we uh, have uh, inherited and of course on which many of the very uh, cardinal uh, um, figures uh, for some time now and even today in the current time are debating about that really what is truly the critical realism is it what science has given to us or is something else that we it's there we can understand it it is there it is intrinsic but still not non-discovered so that is the kind of an approach that Tawhid takes is to discover the intrinsic nature of of reality that intrinsic nature of reality is unity it is the unity of knowledge which re represents itself and creates a world of unity of forms now this is the first uh, 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 part of the lecture but I must uh, before ending just point out to you that the recursive relationship that starts from the ontology where does it end if it never ends anywhere without any definition without any kind of pointing out to you where it ends then of course these kinds of models are dialectical models they are they are there in the literature and it, it does, doesn't leave a message for us doesn't leave a a final end to us. It is a completely recursive, open-ended, uh, open universe uh, uh, conjectural models. But no, in this case, the learning universe that we have, uh, that the Tawhidi model brings about, a non-optimal universe, it is only an evolutionary uh, equilibrium universe. It is not a, not a steady state uh, universe of uh, equilibriums, but it does end. So there is a bound, but this bound is un is bounded, I mean, it's, it's closed, but it is unbounded. It's closed, but unbounded. The closure happens only at the end of time, at the end of, uh, the, of the world, at the end of everything. This is the end of everything, which is called the hereafter. Hereafter, too, is identical with the first, the ontology. Therefore, the ontology proves itself. The ontology goes into itself, which is the meaning of the self-referencing. Now, I think that self-references itself may be unbounded. It is unbounded, but it is closed. And therefore, a closed system, but an unbounded one, has got a logical uh, explan explanatory power within it. So, I, uh, uh, this is the, uh, 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 very briefly, as a, a top of the iceberg kind of uh, um, explanation of the Tawheed as a law, not, uh, not necessarily limiting Tawheed to belief, but Tawheed as law. But if you want to put Tawheed as law, then of course it has to enter into the scientific investigation. And this is what it enables. Okay.